What's at stake? Pharmacy Refusals 101. What you should know. Hi, I'm Gretchen Borschelt, Senior Counsel with the National Women's Law Center, and I will be talking to you today about pharmacists refusing to dispense contraception to women at the pharmacy. Um, so there are two problems. One is that pharmacists are refusing to fill valid prescriptions for contraception, and then also pharmacists are refusing to sell women emergency contraception. For those of you who aren't familiar with emergency contraception, or EC as we call it, it is just a regular form of birth control that works in a more concentrated way to to prevent pregnancy and it's most effective the quicker someone can take it so in the first 12 to 24 hours following unprotected sex or birth control failure or sexual assault um, it can prevent pregnancy from ever happening and it was approved for women and men who are 18 and over to buy it at the pharmacy without a prescription but the problem is that it's kept behind the pharmacy counter so that pharmacists still have the ability to refuse to just sell it to those people who are coming in to buy it and so we've We've seen both these kinds of refusals taking place. And unfortunately, pharmacists who refuse to dispense or sell emergency contraception also usually take more action to really kind of actively obstruct women's access to contraception. So we've heard of pharmacists who refuse to refer women to other pharmacies. We've heard of pharmacists who refuse to transfer prescriptions. Pharmacists in some cases have actually confiscated prescriptions and not given them back to women so that they can't take them somewhere else. We've also heard of pharmacists who actually lie to women about whether a drug is in stock. So they'll say, oh no, we don't sell EC here in this pharmacy, when in fact they do, and the woman could have bought it if she'd had an honest pharmacist. Uh, we've also heard of pharmacists who have stalled or delayed access to emergency contraception, which is, you know, because of the time sensitivity is a real problem, because it only works if you take it within a certain time period. And then we've heard of pharmacists who have publicly lectured or harassed women and in some cases that's led to violations of confidentiality when you think about a woman in a crowded pharmacy area who's being yelled at by a pharmacist because of the contraception that she is seeking. So it's a real problem across the board. And we've recently heard of this new effort to deny women access to contraception. So-called pro-life pharmacies have been popping up around the country. These are pharmacies that actually refuse to stock any contraception at all. And so a woman who goes in not knowing that this pharmacy doesn't have contraception can't get it there and not only will they not sell it they actually won't help women get contraception elsewhere so they won't refer to her to another pharmacy or call around to try and help her find contraception. Now we get a lot of questions about how many refusals are happening and it's hard to say. We know that reports of pharmacist refusals are increasing. We have heard either through press reports or women coming to us directly that refusals have occurred in at least 23 states across the nation. And we certainly think that the problem is underreported because it's kind of a sensitive topic. Some women don't want to talk about it happening to them. They're embarrassed or they don't want it to get out that they were seeking emergency contraception. So we certainly think it's happening more than we know, but it's occurred in at least 23 states across the nation. Um, and I just want to make obvious that the refusals that we're talking about here are refusals that are based on personal, moral, or ethical beliefs. These are not refusals that are based on legitimate medical or professional reasons. Certainly there are professional reasons that we would want a pharmacist to refuse to give someone a prescription. So think of, for example, of contraindications. If you're taking a medication that would interfere with another one you're taking, or if there's a fraudulent prescription. You know, we want pharmacists to exercise their professional judgment, but that's not what we're talking about with these refusals. So let's talk about the effect of refusals. Uh, refusals are bad for all women, and I'll just explain a little bit why we think that. First of all, they deny women's rights to make their decisions about their personal health care. Um, they also allow pharmacists to impose their religious beliefs on women that are seeking that health care. Um, they humiliate and anger women who are subjected to them, especially if they're accompanied by lectures or moralistic opinions, as I said some pharmacists do. And certainly when there's a violation of confidentiality, that's a real problem that hurts the healthcare system. But most importantly, refusals are bad for women's health. So women need contraception in order to prevent unintended pregnancies and to control the timing and spacing of their pregnancies. And that is very important not only to women's health, but to infant health as well. And planned pregnancies can have 
negative consequences on women and infant health. And also it's important to note that women use contraception for reasons other than contraceptive purposes. So women may need uh, contraception in order to prevent endometriosis or to treat endometriosis and to regulate their cycles. And so it's not just contraceptive purposes that women take contraception for. And pharmacists who are refusing don't ever inquire as to why a woman is actually seeking contraception, nor should they. It's not their business. Um, but we don't want refusals for any reasons, whether it's um, because the woman is seeking it for contraceptive purposes or for health reasons. And then there there are three groups in particular that are affected negatively by refusals. Uh, sexual assault survivors, when they've already undergone a rape, um, to refuse to provide them with a chance to prevent pregnancy from rape, obviously can add further trauma to an already traumatic situation. For rural women, uh, they may be geographically limited to one pharmacy. They may not be able to travel from one pharmacy to another in search of medication because it's too far or they're not able to because of the timing of when, when it happens. And, you know, especially in the cases of emergency contraception, it may just not be possible for them to get to another pharmacy in the time frame in which emergency contraception is effective. And then low-income women, they may not have the funds to travel to another pharmacy. And if they're refused in the sense that the pharmacist keeps the prescription and won't give it back to them, they may have to have another doctor's visit and pay for that visit, which could be just too expensive for them to do. And certainly some low-income women have insurance constraints, so they may not be able to go to other pharmacies. Their insurance may only let them go to one pharmacy. So if they face a refusal there, they don't have another option. Now, refusals are not just harmful to women and not just harmful to those groups of women, but they really are harmful to the profession of pharmacy. So again, what we're talking about are refusals that are grounded on personal beliefs, not in professional training. And the public has come to expect um, high standards from the profession of pharmacy. So any kind of refusal that's based not on those medical and scientific considerations, but on other reasons, um, actually undermines what the public expects from the profession of pharmacy. And refusals also represent a breach in the healthcare system. So we depend on pharmacists to help patients comply with doctor orders. And refusals interrupt that system that's in place and should work appropriately. So what does the public think about pharmacist refusals? Uh, well, public opinion is actually squarely opposed to allowing pharmacists to refuse to give women contraception. And we've done two studies that show this clearly. So in July of 2007, as you'll see, we found that 71% of voters said that pharmacists should not be allowed to refuse, and that includes majorities of every voter demographic. And you'll see there Republicans, Christians, Evangelical Christians, and Catholics, and the high percentages of those groups that agree with that statement. And then just recently, in September, October of 2008, we did a survey of Republican and independent voters and found that they also strongly favor legislation that would require pharmacies to ensure that patients get their contraception. So the public really is behind this issue and understands the problems of what happens when a pharmacist refuses to give women access to the contraception that she needs. So the question that we get a lot at the Law Center is whether pharmacists have the right to refuse to dispense drugs based on their personal beliefs and what the law says on this issue. There are 14 states so far that have taken clear, explicit steps to ensure women's access to contraception in the pharmacy. And you see here that there are seven states, they're listed on this slide, that require pharmacists or pharmacies to fill valid prescriptions. So the woman does not leave the pharmacy without contraception in hand. And then there are an additional seven states, and they're listed there as well, that permit an individual pharmacist to refuse, but say that the pharmacist has to help the patient find the contraception somewhere else. So the pharmacist can't refuse to refer, can't refuse to transfer, can't make moralistic judgments or yell at the patient, anything like that. So those 14 good states have taken these positive steps. <music>